Hey guys, this is Test 34 Game 3. This is the trains game. It's an ordering game. We know this because they tell us in the first rule the trains arrive one at a time. This means that they must all arrive at different times, so there has to be an order to their arrival. Now, I've laid out a lot here, but don't worry, I'm going to explain all of that. We start with, you know, the seven slots, one through seven, the seven trains, Q, R, S, T, V, W, Y. The second rule tells us either Y or W is on four, so I put that down. Then they say S is after W, but before Y, giving us the general ordering W, S, Y. Now, there are a number of inferences that we can make from this information. If at least two things go before Y, Y cannot be either first or second. And if at least two things come after W, W cannot be sixth or seventh. Then because S is in the middle of W and Y, it cannot be first or last. Then we get the rule that R is before both T and V. This tells us that T and V cannot be first because then R wouldn't be able to come before them, and R cannot be seventh, or, and it also cannot be sixth because at least two things must go after it. Then the final rule tells us that T and V cannot touch, so they can't appear consecutively in either order. Now, the second to last rule and the last rule itself both involve T and V, so by considering these rules simultaneously, we are able to derive an additional inference. If R is before both T and V, but T and V cannot touch, we can then infer that R cannot be on 5, because if R was on 5, we'd have to have T and V touching on 6 and 7 in either order, which is not permitted. So for this reason, we can infer that R must go in either 1, 2, or 3. So I'm just placing R floating above those three slots, since those are the only places that R could potentially go. So this is the initial setup for the game. Now we can just take the rules one at a time for number 13, a general orientation question, and apply those rules to all five choices looking for violations. So we could take the rule, for example, that T and V can never touch. Scanning through the choices here, we find that choice A has T and V touching. So for that reason, A can be eliminated off the bat. Then we can take the rule that R must go before both T and V, Scanning through the remaining choices, we find that choice E violates this, having T before R, which is unacceptable. Next, we have that W is before S, which is before Y. Choice B violates this, having W before Y before S. Y should have gone after S, not before it. Then finally, we know that either Y or W has to be on 4. And choice D violates this, having S on 4, leaving C by elimination for number 13. Next, number 14, if W is before R. So previously, these two sequences were separate. Now they have to be connected. So if W was before R, and we know that R is before both T and V, so I can link those on. We also know that W, of course, is before S and Y, as always. So now we know that, that W, of course, is before many different things, which makes it rather restrictive. W's before R, T, V, S, and Y. So of course W cannot be on 4 because there would not be enough room to have all five of these things occurring after it. Therefore, Y must be on 4. So make a new diagram with Y on 4. Now, we know R is in one of the first three slots, so if Y is on 4, R must go before Y. So I'm going to put a branch between R and Y to indicate to us that we have to have R and S both occurring before Y and then W before even those guys. So for this reason, we can infer that W must be on 1 for certain, and then we have R and S interchangeable on 2 and 3. So either we have R on 2 and S on 3, or we have S on 2 and R on 3. So now we know exactly R is on either 2 or 3. Now coming after that, we have T and V, as well as Q, the variable about which there are no rules. Now we know that T and V cannot touch according to the last rule of the game, so Q must go on 6, and then we either have T on 5 and V on 7, or V on 5 and T on 7. So those are the two possibilities there for T and V. Now they ask us how many different orders are there for the seven trains. Of course, W, Y, and Q are all constants. Those variables never change. It's R and S changing as well as T and V changing. So there are actually four different possible layouts. We could have W, R, S, Y, T, Q, V, or W, R, S, Y, V, Q, T, or W, S, R, Y, T, Q, V, or W, S, R, Y, V, Q, T. 
So four different possible orderings, therefore choice A, four is our answer. Now you get this by multiplying the possibilities, not by adding them. I'm going to do a brief tangent here to explain. If we were making outfits with shirts and pants, and we had you know, shirt A, shirt B, and shirt C, and then pants D and pants E, there would be six different possible outfits, meaning six different possible arrangements, not five, because you'd have A, D, A, E, B, D, or B, E, and then C, D, or C, E. So A, D, A, E is two, B, D, B, E is another two making four, and then C, D, C, E is another yet two making six. So similarly, if we got rid of shirt C and only had two possibilities for shirts, two possibilities for pants, it would, it would be four, A, D, A, E, and B, D, B, E, which is essentially what's happening on the main diagram here, simply with more variables. So A is our answer for number 14. Next, number 15. I'm going to leave 14's work here just because we can make use of it for a bunch of the other questions here. So they ask us in general, what must be true? Must the first train be Rockville? Of course not. We have W on 1, so we have proof that W on 1 is possible, meaning that R on 1 is not a must. Must we have Q before S? No, here we have S on 2 or 3 and then Q on 6, so B is impossible it's not a, in, in that it's not a must. CR before W, of course we have W before R on 2 or 3, so C is not a must. Then DV before Y, of course we have Y on 4 and then V on 5 or 7 coming after it, so D is not a must, leaving E by elimination. And then if we look at E, W before Y, of course we have that here and W and Y before y in general is a must, we have w before s before y according to the third rule of the game. So of course that is always a must. Now I just want to point out that even the question stem of number 14 could have helped you get to the answer for 15 by eliminating a couple of wrong choices in 15. 14 says if w occurs before r, and we know that we were able, you don't see zero as a choice for number 14, so we know then that it is possible to have W before R and still arrive at some kind of valid scenario. So right away, choice A of 15, first train R, we know that's not a must because we know it is possible to have W before R. Similarly, choice C, R before W, we know is not a must because the question stem of 14 tells you that it's possible to have W before R. So those things kind of help you out a bit in terms of eliminating wrong choices. Then in general, we know that for choice B, Q is a random variable. There are never any rules about it. So Q could always be before or after someone else. And then looking at D, V before Y, we see on our initial rules here that V and Y are unrelated. It was the question sum of 14 that related them together in the first place. Next, number 16, general could be true question. Of course, we can once again draw upon 14's work here, hoping for a hit in question 16's choices, of course, we could also refer back to question 13, choice E, but I would recommend using 14's work whenever possible simply because it contains four valid scenarios within it. See the ambiguities here on 2 and 3 and 5 and 7, whereas question 13's correct answer, choice C, only had one valid scenario there. So anyway, could S be next after Q, meaning QS? We don't see it here doesn't mean it's not possible necessarily, it just means we haven't seen proof. But then looking at B, R is the next after S. We see that it's possible to have S on 2 and R on 3. So we have our proof that B is possible, therefore B is our answer for number 16. Next, number 17, if we have exactly one thing after S but before Y. Meaning, you know, we have exactly one thing before Y, exactly one thing after W there, giving us the general ordering W space Y. W, you know, w followed by something followed by y. Of course, we actually know that thing has to be s because s is always between w and y. So I'm going to put s right in the middle there. Now, we never saw this occur on 14's diagram. We have w, s, r, y, or w, r, s, y. But if you look back at 13 choice c, we do have w, s, y occurring in that order adjacent with nothing in between them. So this is relevant to solving number 17. If we see a choice from 17 occurring in 13C, then we're good. So scanning through the choices for 17, we actually do get a hit. In choice E, the first train is Rockville. We do see that in 13C, therefore we know it is possible. No need to draw anything, no need to look at the others. However, 
I will do the work for 17 just to show you what you would have done if you forgot to use previous work or if previous work did not help. So here are the two different main possibilities, one with W on 4, one with Y on 4. The W slash Y rule on 4 is what I'm using to create these two different main diagrams, and you see I've laid them out with W, S, Y occurring consecutively in that order. Now our initial main diagram showed us that we had to have R within the first three slots. So for that reason, I'm going to put down R on slot 1, and then we have R before both T and V, but they can't touch. So T and V are going to be spaced apart on 5 and 7. One will be on 5, the other will be on 7, and then we have Q occurring on 6. Then for the other possibility, the top one, R is not limited necessarily to one of any one of the first three slots in particular, but we do know that R cannot be on 3 here because then T and V would, would, only, would not both fit. We'd have only one of them on slot 7 on the top possibility. So for this reason, we don't really want to go too much further here. This is good enough to run through the choices. So could we have S on 6? Of course not. We have either Y or Q on 6 for certain. A is gone. Could we have T on 6? Again, no, we have only Y or Q there. Could we have R on 3? In the bottom possibility, S is there. And the top possibility, R on 3, does not work as I've indicated here because then we could only fit one of T or V after it. So C is gone. Then looking at D, S on 2. We have W on 2 in the bottom. Top on 2 is blank, but we do see S is either on 3 or on 5. So for that reason, no, S could not be on 2. D is gone. And then R on 1, of course, we see right here in the bottom possibility. So we're good for number 17. Next, number 18, if Q's before R. Very open-ended, as you see here, we have the ordering W, S, Y, and then the orderings R before both T and V. Diagram for number 14 became very limited because it combined these two things together, restricting the possibilities a great deal. Now they're simply sticking Q in front of the R, T, V sequence, but these two things aren't linking together, so we don't really have much of a clear starting point. If we look at the rest of the question stem, we see that apparently when you place Q before R, W is limited to some particular slot. So if we can make a diagram that works, wherever we see W occurring, that will be our scenario that provides us with the answer. So because this is regarding W here, I'm going to slap down W on 4 since we know either Y or W has to occur on 4. If I can make a scenario where W on 4 works, I'll be good. So I'm just going to kind of throw things down in compliance with the rules. If W is on 4, let's see, I'll put S on 5, I'll put Y on 6, then I have the variables Q before R, before T, before V. Does this work? Yes, it complies with all of the rules. We have W before S before Y, we have Q before R, and then T and V following, which T and V are not touching, and we have one of Y or W on 4. So W on 4 works, therefore C fourth is the answer to number 18. Now, of course, we got lucky here because we, the first thing we tried out worked. If we put Y on 4, what would have happened? Well, if we've got Y on 4, we've got to have S and W coming before it. Then we have Q before R. But then we run into trouble because we have T and V touching in either order on 6 and 7. So this scenario is invalid, no good, making W on 4 work, whatever the scenario you would have drawn resulted in. So either way, you only have to draw one scenario for number 18. Either way, you learn that, y, that W on 4 works rather quickly.